Hey guys, let's get more news about Dallas, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. 49ers could sign X-Jets TE as injury cover for Jake Ferguson. While things are looking up for Jake Ferguson, the Dallas Cowboys could cover all their bases by signing a former New York Jets TE. CJ Uzoma has had a rough offseason coming into the 2024 campaign, but the free agent would be an ideal signing for a team like the Cowboys. Ferguson avoided a major injury during week one, more on that below, but it's always better to be safe than sorry. If Dallas does decide they need to reinforce the T group, there may not be a better option than Uzoma. Uzoma was recently released by the Philadelphia Eagles, but failed to make the roster. The former Auburn Tiger has never exploded in terms of production but has 192 receptions, 1891 receiving yards, and 16 touchdowns to his name. At this stage, going for a player with experience and proven ability makes more sense to cover for Ferguson. Plus, the Cowboys' TE group are all relatively inexperienced. Luke Schoonmaker and Hunter Lupke are both talented players but are in just their second NFL season. If Ferguson's injury worsens or complicates, adding a nine-year player like Uzoma would make the most sense for Dallas. Uzoma is a solid option, but Dallas may be able to rest easy. After Ferguson went down against the Cleveland Browns last Sunday, initial fears included a serious ACL injury. Just three days later, Ferguson revealed that the pain has subsided according to the athletics' John Machota. Cowboys' T.E. Jake Ferguson said the pain of his knee injury was a 10 on Sunday. It's a zero today, Machota wrote on X on September 11. The initial thought was that it was an ACL injury. Thankfully just a little bone bruise. I don't even think it's a grade one. That's great news for the Cowboys, as Ferguson is the clear lead T.E. After exploding onto the national scene with 71 receptions, 761 yards, and five touchdowns in 2023, he seems set for another huge year in Dallas offense. Dodging a bullet like an ACL sprain or tear means he may not have to miss any time at all. While Dallas could look to the free agency or trade market if the need arises, blogging the boys writer Brian Martin believes the team already has their reinforcement. In a September 12 article, Martin explained why FB Hunter Lupke should be taking snaps in Ferguson's stead. Unless the Dallas Cowboys are 100% certain Ferguson is back to full strength, they should probably consider sitting him this week to prevent any chance of possible rain jury Lupke's position flex and versatility could give the Cowboys' offense a slight advantage over the Saints this week. His ability to play fullback or tight end on any given play means they can seamless the go from 12 to 21 personnel whenever they want. Martin also explains that Dallas essentially used Lupke as a natural TE replacement against Cleveland. Lupke actually took more snaps as an inline tight end, 10, than he did as a backfield fullback, 8. There's a lot to like about Lupke, and Cowboys fans may be seeing him a lot more in the coming weeks. I heard a pop. Cowboys practice report, Jake update. The Dallas Cowboys 33-17 win at the Cleveland Browns in Week 1 was delivered with only one downer, the injury scare for tight end Jake Ferguson, who admitted that immediately in Sunday's game, both the pain and the emotions were powerful. The immediate pain, on the scale of 1 to 10? Probably like a 10, he said. And the immediate emotion? Oh my God. It kind of hit me and a couple tears were shed that was Sunday. This is Thursday. The Pro Bowl tight end did sustain an MCL sprain along with a bone bruise in his knee, and there might be some wisdom to using caution as he tries to rehab in time to play in the Week 2 matchup against the New Orleans Saints. But on Thursday, here, inside the star? One day after being a DNP at the workout, he is at least on the cords with trainer Britt Brown, thus accelerating his rehab. Thankfully, it's just a little bone bruise and MCL, he said, acknowledging that there was a moment when he feared it was an ACL tear because of just the way it looked. The way it looked. I did hear a pop and I think that, 
I mean, that's the first time I've ever had anything pop thankfully, the man upstairs had a different plan, and I'm just lucky to not have that happen. Is the plan for the pro bowler to play on Sunday? Not quite yet. Indeed, he is again listed as a DNP on Thursday. There's some stuff you can play through, and I'm one of those guys who if I can play through it, I'm going to go, he said. But at the same time, if I can't give this team my best and I can't live up to the standard, and play at that standard that we hold, then there's no point in me hurting the team. Ferguson this week issues some gems for the quote board, including noting that he's like a starfish, because his wounded limb will grow back, and this game isn't loyal, he is a tough guy, no doubt. And he's valuable, a fourth-round pick in 2022 who last year had 761 yards and five touchdowns on 71 catches during his second pro season. Also valued, rookie defensive end Marshawn Neeland, who was out on Wednesday with a calf issue but is in full pads now. And tight end John Stevens Jr. is on the courts with his hamstring. The Cowboys do have depth at the position, from 2023 second-round pick Luke Schoonmaker to fullback, capable of moving, Hunter Lupke. And so, if I go out there and I'm working with the trainers on stuff and it doesn't feel right or I can't do one thing or the other that is going to lead to me not being able to do my job, then it's going to probably be a no-go, Ferguson said. But if it's all good and I'm feeling great, then I'm not going to be the one who pulls back. New trade idea to strengthen the Dallas Cowboys. Imagine the Dallas Cowboys, already a formidable force, transforming into an even more unstoppable team with just one strategic trade. The potential impact of such a move is immense and could significantly alter the team's dynamics. The game against the Cleveland Browns was a testament to the Cowboys' defense, showcasing its potential to be a dominant force this year. While the offense had challenges, the defense stood firm, providing a reassuring anchor for the team. The Dallas Cowboys' offense faced the number one defense from a year ago, and the stats showed it. The offense made a few big plays that boosted their stats, but aside from those plays, they looked rusty. Could the offense benefit from adding a player to help improve a specific aspect of their game and get Dak Prescott and the team performing at their best? While Dak Prescott and C.D. Lamb may have seemed slightly off, their timing is expected to return, significantly improving the passing game. The offensive line wasn't bad, but it wasn't great either. This issue should solve itself, with the youth on the line getting more experience. The one glaring need seemed to be the running game. Ezekiel Elliott looked decent in the first game back as a Dallas Cowboy. Ezekiel Elliott had 10 carries for 40 yards and a touchdown. Those are not terrible numbers for a running back who is supposed to be over the hill in terms of NFL running backs. Rico Dowdle and Deuce Vaughn did not add much to the running game. Rico Dowdle had 8 carries for 26 yards, averaging 3.3 yards per carry. These numbers will not work for this offense. Deuce Vaughn was not allowed to impact any aspect of the game. He only had one carry for four yards. The two players with the best average running the ball were the starting wide receivers, C.D. Lamb and Brandon Cooks. Lamb had three carries for 25 yards, averaging 8.3 yards. To add to the running game, Brandon Cooks had one rush for five yards. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of Damian Pierce? Leave your opinion in the comments.